I would like to begin with the title of the slide, uh, Heart, Heart and the Earth. Uh, in our language Tamil, uh, the word Agam stands for heart, heart, which is the house or home, and also the earth. So we use the same word for all these three aspects. So I thought uh, it is the connecting thread uh, that links the humans, the spiritual element of humans, and then the home or house, and then the oikos. We uh, go back to the Greek word called oikos, which is the root word for both ecology as well as economy. And there is a very close connection between ecology and economy. So I would like to quote Vangari Matai, the founder of the Green Belt Movement. She says, trees are living symbols of peace and hope. A tree has roots in the soil, yet it reaches to the sky. It tells us in order to aspire, we need to be grounded. And no matter how high we go, it is from the roots that we draw sustenance. So I, I thought, you know, looking at the title of this entire program, there's a connection between roots and stories, storytelling and ecology. So where did it all begin? When I was working on my research, uh, I came across this word ecofeminism, and it created a thought spark in me. Uh, and uh, I was reminded of my childhood days when I heard stories, listened to my grandmother uh, or uh, my aunt, uh, my relatives telling me a story about trees, about animals, about birds in uh, my native place, which is a hilly area, which is a hill station called Korekanal. And uh, I grew up amidst nature. And I think when I read the book on ecofeminism, I felt it was already there within me and it created so much of interest in me. And I'm really passionate about environment and uh, gender. And that was the starting point of my research. So uh, it's not only my uh, grandmother and my mother and aunt who told me stories, but there were women who collected firewood. They used to bring firewood on their heads, actually, carrying uh, their children uh, in a sling. And uh, they would uh, come into the town to sell firewood. And they had stories. They had stories about their lives. So there were women who were selling vegetables and they had stories. So there were women who were selling flowers and they had stories. So they were very beautiful, true, authentic stories of nature. And this is how it all started. And uh, the I have just highlighted the different types of folk tales, like fables. I've heard fables from my grandparents, parables from uh, great leaders. We come across uh, the stories narrated in the church or uh, in schools, like the parables of Jesus, parables of Buddha, parables of uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa. There are different uh, religious leaders or spiritual leaders who narrate parables. And then there are myths myths about the creation, how the earth was created. For example, there is a beautiful story, which is a Beel myth. Beel is a tribal um, community in uh, India. And the story is called, First There Was a Woman. So uh, the woman was the first creation, according to the Beel tribe. So it's actually a creation myth, unlike the Adam and Eve story, which is also a myth. So we came across such myths. And then we have legends. So legends about trees in a particular place, legends about great personalities who fought against um, you know, people who were trying to cut down the trees. For example, Chipko story of the North, where there is a, a girl called Amrita who fights with a king who you know, set out to uh, cut uh, a lot of trees. So there are legends and then fairy tales, which talk about nature. And then there are anecdotes, very interesting anecdotes from real life. And uh, uh, these are some of the stories which we have heard uh, right from our childhood days. 
And then uh, the next topic is gardening to agriculture. So in my grandmother's house, my grandmother used to do gardening. My mother used to do gardening. And they also did vegetable cultivation, which is which was a form of agriculture. And um, I, I grew up watching, you know, a vegetable cultivation in uh, the hilly areas. So that inspired me to think about the close proximity, the relationship between women and nature. And uh, uh, people who live very close to nature are eco-sensitive and they respect the spiritual element of life around them. To give you an example, my grandmother used to feed uh, the birds and the animals by uh, leaving the food on a leaf. You know, she, she would not just leave the food, you know, somewhere on the floor, but then she plucks a, a big leaf, you know, and it's, it's like a an elephant ear shaped leaf. And then she places the food and then, you know, uh, have, hands it over to, you know, uh, the uh, people who are uh, sharing the food with the animals or birds. So it was such a beautiful experience to watch all that. And then, uh, of course, the deep ecological values, ecofeminism and deep ecology go together. And uh, deep ecology respects the intrinsic value of life. So a tree exists for its own sake, not for the sake of human beings. So we understand that, you know, a butterfly, a honeybee, or, um, uh, you know, a bird, a flower has its own intrinsic value or inherent worth. And we learn all this when we are amidst nature. And uh, this was the starting point of my ecofeminist journey.